So really um, delighted and honored to be here. Um, and uh, also just want to send out a, a, a shout to all of our first responders who are working to keep us and our families safe. We are so grateful for what you do every day on behalf of us. And um, uh, the, the folks who take their time to volunteer for those services, I just have the, the deepest gratitude and respect for what you do. So thank you all, thank you all so much. So today, I want to show you a little bit about this thing called nature journaling and take you on sort of a, an imaginary walk um, around Marin County and we'll be doing a little bit of nature journaling. We can't really go out right now, um, but were you to do that tomorrow morning, um, this is what it could look like. Um, I believe that keeping a notebook of your observations and your discoveries and your thoughts um, wherever you go is the best thing that you can do to help you become a better naturalist, to help you become one of those locals who knows all the secrets, to improve your memory, improve your observation skills, and to have more fun, frankly, just being alive. Um, our human brains, um, as, as, as wonderful as they are, are barely getting by. So essentially, most of your gray matter is kind of going around and, and looking around the woods and kind of spotting, focusing on something and going like, can it eat me? And then you go like, can I eat it? And once you've got these things kind of figured out, um, you, you, your brain kind of slips on to the next thing. That's about the height of, the, of, of where we're able to go. When we want to do higher order thinking, for instance, um, you know, really understanding something, paying more attention, um, we need to do something to kind of jog our brain. And similarly, in order to help us remember things, we also need to just do a little bit more work. But that little bit of work is an absolute game changer and is really, really fun to do. Um, so you, you may have, uh, you know, I, I'm a rather forgetful guy. Um, today, for instance, I had a class. I was teaching an online class. Started at 2 o'clock. At 2.30, I got a phone call from one of my friends saying, like, aren't you teaching the class right now? I went, like, why, yes. But I was distracted because I was helping my two little daughters get snacks, right? And, like, getting snacks for Amelia and Carolyn maxed out my brain. And um, so how can we kind of get our brains to kind of work at a higher level? Um, if you want to pay attention to something um, and you stare at it, your brain quickly goes like, you know what? Nothing really here for my survival and your attention wanders. How can you get yourself to sort of see more, to notice more when you're out and about and exploring? And similarly, how can you get yourself to remember the details of those experiences? So just, you know, on the, the um, memory front, how's that working out for you? All right, for me? Mm -mm. Turns out for most of us, human memories are really, really, really bad things. And when we kind of, but, like, but, you, but all of us, all of us can kind of go back to some moment in the past and remember it vividly. It turns out that those memories we have of things we did a long time ago, or maybe last week, are largely fabricated by our creative processes in our brain. So when you go about remembering something, you, that vivid picture you see is mostly stuff that your brain made up. And your brain, you can't tell the difference between the stuff that you made up, the confabulation, and the things that really happened. And so has anybody ever had the experience of telling somebody else a story that happened to you? And then they say, no, actually, that happened to me. And I told you that story. All right. Oh, Amy's got that too. All right. Hey, Kirby too. So a, a, a few of us. Or have you ever told a joke to the person who told it to you? All right. You know, all right. Memory is, is a goofy, creative, not very good thing. Um, but there's, there's something that we can do about that. And 
it's a very powerful tool to get our brains both to pay more attention and to be able to remember experiences vividly. And what it is, is as you kind of go out and about, look over here so you can all see me, um, what you do is in your journal, you keep a journal, and whatever it is that you are looking at, whatever you're seeing, you're thinking, you take those observations and you put them down in a notebook. And when you do that, it's going to, in the moment, get you to focus at a much deeper level. And it's also going to help you remember that experience later on. I don't know if, ever you, if, if any of you have ever on a little trip, you're traveling somewhere and you pull out a little notebook you made of this little sketch. Maybe there's an abbey on the hill or something. You make a little sketch. That moment where you made the little sketch is with you forever. You can remember that experience vividly. And the reason is because you took just a little bit more time to make a little sketch of it. And when we do that, it's the most powerful thing you can do to make a kind of get a memory lock on something. You draw it, you get notes about it in a journal, and bam, you are, your, your ability to remember that experience is much, much, much better. And but this is a skill that all of us can learn to, uh, to, a really high degree of, of functional, fun utility. And it doesn't take forever to learn. Um, if you have not drawn and kept uh, a, a journal since you are in fourth grade, um, it takes about a year of doing it on a regular basis to, to have it be something where like you make a sketch and this sketch looks like that thing. It's not a gift, it's not a magic um, a, a ability that some people have and some people don't. It's a skill that you could all learn to do. And if, as you go about your business, as a Marin County local, and you keep a, just a little notebook with you, and every once in a while you stop, you sit down, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Look, the bluebirds have come back. and make a little sketch of a bluebird. Your, your ability to remember and your ability to focus and pay attention just goes up and up and up and up and up. So what I want to do is just kind of take us on a little kind of fantasy walk. Um, we're gonna walk around some, a uh, little bit of West Marin. And um, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a journal with us. We're gonna see a few things and we're gonna document it in a journal. And I just wanna give you some strategies and techniques. Because sometimes if you kind of see what the process looks like, you're like, oh wow, you know, I think I could do that. I think that could be fun. All right, so um, I am going to, um, so sort of, I'm gonna have a little document camera on and we are going to walk through this, 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 this process. And um, let me see here. Um, I need to change my camera view. And here we go. And there we are. And spin this around. There we are. And we're good to go. All right. So here we are. We are walking around in, 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 in West Moran. Actually, I need to make sure that I can. Um, just a, a Kirby, uh, could you give me a, a quick, or Anne, could you give me a quick check? Can you see this page on your screen? Yes. All right, great. So um, here it is. It's the, the blank slate at the start of your day. And what we're going to do is we're going to spend um, a day just sort of taking a walk around and we're going to just take some notes about what happens. Taking notes of the things you want to remember is really, really powerful. Um, you do are doing this already. If you run out of eggs, then you write eggs down on a list. And then the next time you're at uh, uh, the, the market, you say like, oh, let's get some eggs because it's there written on your list. The listing thing works really, really well. And we're gonna be doing that with all of our discoveries today. So what you wanna do is first just get yourself a notebook, one that is easy, sort of small enough for you to carry with you, um, but 
um, big enough for you to be able to use the, the really little tiny ones. They fit in your pocket, but you know you need to get half a thought, and then you need to turn the page. Um, what I like to do is at the start of a day, I will just put down the the date um, and my location. So let's say it's uh, May. And it's May 20th and 2020. And um, it is, um, it's a, there's a little bit of clouds out today, but the sun is shining out from behind them. It's going to be a good day. Um, so what I'll often do is just give myself a little, at the, the start of a day, I'll just give myself a little um, kind of title or, or kind of um, date stamp here in my journal. If I just do something like this, um, then I'm going to say, I'm, oh yeah, we're in West Marin. I'm now date stamped and geo referenced my journal. And because I did this, just put something on my page, the whole blank page now feels just a little bit less scary. And so it's much easier for more things to come along and follow that. So we're going to just start, uh, we're going to head out on that um, trail behind town and up towards the hills. And we're, you're walking along, and my general search is I just sort of look for anything that I think is beautiful or interesting. So I'm looking for wonder and beauty. And you're hiking down the trail, and you look over on the fence, and there is a bluebird. And you're like, whoa, gosh, there's, there's a bluebird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make just a quick sketch of the bluebird in my journal. Um, and it doesn't have to be a pretty picture. Um, I'm just like, let's say here is, here's a, we've got some wires going on the fence and there's going to be a post in here and um, there's going to be a bluebird and it's going to be somewhere in there, All right? So again, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a, 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 a really pretty picture or anything. But just giving myself a little placeholder here, it's going to help me just remember like, oh, there was a bluebird on the fence. Now, I'm not, uh, I don't have my binoculars out yet, and so I don't get a really good look at it. All I see is just this little kind of flash of red and blue on the side of the fence. So my sketch doesn't get any, um, uh, it's not a very detailed thing here, but I'm going to, how can you tell that this is a bluebird? The reason you can tell is because you draw an arrow to it and you say bluebird. Because you love bluebirds. Um, I often like to to add a little bit of color to my journal. And so I'm gonna, maybe we probably still have, it's, it's, it's May, there's still a little bit of green out here. Oh, what a garish color of green. And there is just a little bit of, So a little bit of dark on this fence post. And the part I've been really looking forward to is bluebirds, they've got this blue on their head. And then they've got reddish orange on their tummy. And then they've got a white belly, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. There it is, a little bluebird on a fence. And um, I can write it flies out 
to catch insects, then back to the fence. Oh, look, there's a female, right? So I'm going to say this is a male bluebird. Um, female on same fence. So, you know, here I just put in a whole new bird, just writing it in. What I do when I'm taking field notes like this is I draw, I have some pictures in there and I have words in there. And if you're more comfortable using words, your journal can be mostly words. If you're more comfortable drawing pictures, it can be mostly pictures. But you want to intentionally use both of these together. And um, you're going to find that it's just a lot easier to record whatever it is that you're looking at. So the bluebird flies away and you continue on down the trail. You um, uh, uh, head up into the, the hills and and you look down um, in a shady area and there are beautiful blue wildflowers. And you didn't bring your um, wildflower book with you today. But what you do, because you've got your journal, you want to observe it carefully and then make just a few notes uh, in, in here in your journal. And you're going to be able to identify this thing when you get home. So I'll show you a little trick. This wildflower has, has six um, petals. And so what I do is I make myself a little peace sign. And then continue those out. I'm going to move this one up. I'm going to move this one up. So that, there we go, they're roughly evenly spaced. What I'll do is I'll make a little star diagram like that before drawing in any details. And then just lock in the locations of these petals. If you block that in first, it's a lot easier then to just kind of come along and draw details. And so I can, if I like this diagram, this, this sort of layout, it seems the symmetry seems right to me. I can then get in with a pen or a pencil and start to add in my details. So I've kind of given myself a framework here. This one has two different types of petals or can't quite tell, maybe the botanists say they're petals, maybe they're sepals, uh, who knows, but the, they're skinny and they come to a little point on the end here. And there's three of them that are really skinny. And those ones make a little peace sign. All right. They've got a little vein. They've got a lot of veins. Each one has three big veins on it. Probably thinks this song is about it. And then what's cool about the other three is that when you, when you stop to make a sketch like this, you'll start to see things that you otherwise wouldn't have seen. So for instance, you take a close look at these and you realize that these ones, they're actually not the same. These ones are a little bit more chunky. These are chunky petals. So I've got three skinnies and three chunky ones. And so here's my chunky one. And it tucks underneath the skinny ones. So a big reason why I keep a journal is that it makes me kind of slow down and notice, notice what's going on. So that's an enlargement of the flower. If I had the real flower here, the real flower would be about this big from here to here. 
So if I line this up one flower height, so if this is one flower height here, one flower height, two and a half, this is about two and a half times. This is 2.5 times enlarged. So I put the little enlargement in there. And this has this golden center. There's a golden star, gold star in middle. I know I've seen this before. We're gonna be, and then um, purple blue. Um, if you carry color with you, you can add color into it. That's always fun. But if you don't, you just make do with whatever you have. Oh, that's not the color. So I test often it's a good idea to test your colors before they hit your page. All right. When you make journal pages, there's going to be lots of things that are wrong. You'll make mistakes. It's sort of this book filled with mistakes because you're you're going around. What about try that color? No, that's still not right. What about that? Oh, that's better. Okay. Um, there we go. Um, so you want to give yourself permission to make mistakes, lots of mistakes. On anything that you're learning, if you are in a zone where you're not making mistakes, then you're not trying and you're actually not learning. You, in order for your brain to kind of develop and learn a new skill, you want to kind of push it outside of its comfort zone. If you're not making mistakes in there, then you're just too comfortable. All right, so you want to note to self, you know, what is this? I remember this last year. And um, there are dozens um, under oak trees at the edge of the field. Again, words and pictures. The best, actually, to be a little bit more specific, it's the, 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 the formula is words, pictures, and numbers. You want to start quantifying things as much as possible. And so there may be maybe, maybe 50 or so. There might be 50 flowers in bloom with lots of buds. So there it is, words, pictures, and numbers. I've just described this, this flower. I didn't have to bring a field guide with me, but because I made this little sketch, what's gonna happen is the next time I'm out here, I'm gonna remember it much better. This time when I'm out here, I've been able to make several discoveries about it. And so this made me look a little bit more carefully at it. The trick of doing an enlargement is really, really good. That's really fun. And um, actually what I can do is I'm gonna draw an enlargement of part of my enlargement. I'm gonna just take one of these petals and one of these petals, if I look really carefully at it, at the tip of it, it actually does a little wiggle and the vein comes up and there's another vein that comes in here and that. So here's just a little diagram of, I made a mistake in here. At first when I was sketching it, I wasn't catching the little whoop at the tip of it. So I just made another draw, drawing and I'm gonna notice this note. Um, and I want myself to, to kind of notice um, the cool, your little eyeballs checking it out. Um, you know, it's got this cool um, petal tip shape. So anything that you notice, anything that you want to remember, you put it down. You know, perhaps you're there with, with your friends 
and you um, so you get out some snacks um, and you know anything you put down in this journal um, that is going to you're going to remember it just a little bit more vividly um, and so if you wrote um, Anne um, brought really good cheese, all right? Um, you make a little sketch of that and you're going to, you know, it's a, it's a playful way of documenting the moments of your life. And you can ask her, what kind of cheese is this? Then you put a note of it down and then the next time you're at the cheese company, you can pick it up, All right? So whatever it is that you want to remember, the secret is to get it out of your head and get it onto paper. And this can be cool, natural history stuff. Um, for me, lots of my journals, it's, it's sort of nature, natural history stuff. Um, but really, whatever it is that gets you kind of having fun that day and excited about being alive, um, get that down into your journal. Those are the things that you're, you think you're never going to forget that? Give it a half hour. Human memories, even these precious, precious moments the time that you're spent with your friends, um, they drift away. But if you just document them, it just takes a little bit of time. And that, that experience is going to be, is going to be with you for forever. The activity of the doing this it triggers your brain in a different way because it takes a little bit of work and effort. And because of that effort, it logs it into your brain. The passive activity of just kind of walking down the trail, that was a nice day. That's how our brains forget things. But a little bit more time, a little bit more effort. And those memories are going to be yours. So you, you head on down the trail and um, you're just looking for anything that catches your eye. And again, wonder and beauty, that's what you scan for. Um, you sit, you come to a place where you look out and some people call it the elephant mountain, black mountain. There's that cool sort of set of knuckles right, on the land. And it looks different in every season. Every time of the year, it's got, it's got these different, different hues to it. And if you pay attention to those sort of things, it just sort of allows you to, to notice more about a place. Um, so let's just make a little landscape drawing of it. And I'm gonna show you a really great trick for doing a landscape. The, um, what I don't recommend doing, doing, what I don't recommend doing, let me see if I can zoom down here a little bit. Woo. Um, hold on one moment. I'll try one more attempt at zooming down. Oh, we'll do this. Ah, oh. is, is my screen frozen? Yeah? Maybe. Can you see my hand moving down here? No, uh, Jack, I can't. Um, oh, okay. Let me, um, I'm gonna jump back to the Jack cam. Hi, it's me. I'm your host, John Deere Loves. Um, and uh, now I'm going to try to, we hope that this isn't one of these things where 
It says, you must restart. Ah, this is, this is looking better. All right, there's our cheese. Hey, Anne, thank you for bringing the cheese. That was really good. Um, so um, when there's a landscape, people will tend to make the landscape really, really big. Um, but if instead you keep it small, you're going to be able to finish a little landscape drawing before your friends finish their snacks and are ready to go on. If I turn the paper sideways and did a landscape drawing from here to here, I'd get halfway through it before it was time to kind of move out. But if I keep it small, then I am going to be able to, 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 to really finish this in, in record time. So check this out. So here's, I'm just going to, I lightly first block in my basic shape. Got a hill kind of coming down here. I'm going to have my neat mountain in here and it's going to, oh, there. So that's going to be time for, it. it's got one, two, three, four, five, six valleys. And so I'm just two, three, four, five, six valleys. And so I'm just kind of lightly getting a placeholder for the mountain. And um, here's a kind of a neat strategy. So, so I, first, you notice I'm just blocking in the general location of it. And then what I'm going to do is as I look at the mountain, I spend actually more time looking at the mountain than looking at my paper. And you want to kind of just bring your pencil along the ridge and let it follow those contours. Now, there will be things that are wrong with your mountain, and that's okay. Um, you know, mine should be just a little bit more rounded, not, not kind of jaggy, and that's, that's fine. Um, there are a number of these valleys, and some of them have little oak woodlands in them. And so if you draw in the shape of the oak woodlands, you end up carving the bottoms of these valleys. So here's another one, the, little, the oak woodlands kind of extend up on the sides. And you just sort of want to think of those just as, as, as shapes, just as little shapes kind of going up. That's interesting, the kind of mosaic of different patterns that you get um, in those little valleys. Each one has its own little secrets. And then you can carve these valleys, just a few little lines that kind of come, imagine you're like a little roller coaster here. I'm just carving down one side and carving up the next. A few of those little lines just help somebody who's looking at your journal go like, oh, look, it's a valley. I do a lot of sketching now with ballpoint pen because it allows me to, um, You know, you can get some light lines in it nicely. There's a little hill in front of it here and some grassland. So I'm just keeping this really simple because I'm keeping it simple this drawing is going quickly. And because I'm keeping it small, the drawing is going quickly. If I had put in a bunch of detail, I would still be somewhere in that first valley. So I can finish this. And Anne has just finished cutting a little bit more cheese and bread for everybody. Thank you for bringing that Anne. That's really kind of taken one for the team.
If I choose to put color in this, a little bit of color goes a long way. And you can um, get sort of a sense of the season. Maybe things are starting to brown up a little bit. Other hills are still green. Maybe there's still some green in some of the valleys. But it, um, you know, it, it's not a, uh, you're not kind of looking at a, 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 a detailed picture. It's just something to kind of quickly give you a shape, give you a little bit of a memory of a place. Remember that partly cloudy sky? There still are a few little clouds up there. Hills are starting to turn brown. Hills starting to turn brown. Is this early? If I had made some sketches in past years, I could compare it and sort of see how that season is turning, this one compared to the others. So you continue hiking on along with your friends and you're just about um, back to where you started and you come around the corner and there is that bluebird again. It's kind of bookmark the beginning and the end of your hike. And what's uh, wonderful about it is that this time you get a better look at it. You can, um, Herbie's got those binoculars, loans you the binoculars and you get a closer look at it. And um, if you're interested in tricks and techniques on drawing birds and things like that, I've got a website where I've put um, uh, hundreds of free videos and resources up to help you be able to draw stuff in nature. Um, similarly, every week I teach three free nature drawing and journaling workshops. Um, and in those, I, you can get a bunch of techniques to, to help you be able to draw birds, but I'm going to just use some of those now to quickly get a sketch of that wonderful bluebird. And so what I'm, what you're seeing me do here is, is sort of techniques that in those videos, I kind of block out what my steps are, but I've come up with a very deliberate practice and kind of an order of operations for drawing in the details of a bird. It starts with just a light sketch that gives you the general shape. And once you like your general shape, you can refine that. So bluebirds are actually thrushes, so they're related to um, robins. And um, they've taken to a very different kind of lifestyle. They're catching their food instead of all on the ground. They do a lot of aerial hovering and cool techniques to find those bugs. a little bluebird head. And the males just have wonderful patterns and, and colors. Bright sky blue heads. Absolutely spectacular little animals. 
very patriotic. They kind of do this red, white, and blue thing. Now, the more you practice drawing anything, the better and better it comes. Um, I have drawn a lot of birds. Um, and so that makes my uh, bird drawings come a little bit more easily. Um, practice is the most important thing in this. Um, but the, the really interesting bit about it is that it doesn't take, it doesn't take forever to develop the skill. Many, many people in retirement decide that, all right, I'm going to take up drawing. Um, I've always wanted to, to draw. Um, and, um, but I, I, I never, never really had the, 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 gave myself the time or the permission. And if you just start, you're going to find that very quickly it becomes a skill that you can do. Um, the, the scary thing for a lot of, especially for adults, is that we don't want to do anything that we're not already good at. So later in life, we're not challenging ourselves taking up new activities. But if you can get yourself to, 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 to do that, that makes, that makes a huge, huge difference. Um, whatever it is that you do, choose something that's, especially at the start, just a little bit challenging. And you're like, oh, I couldn't do that. Um, and that's the, that's the sweet spot for what the scientists call neuroplasticity, our brain's ability to develop new skills, block in new neural tracks based on the work which we do. So if it is challenging, that's actually a really good thing. You want to take up skills that are outside of your comfort zone. And as you do that, your brain builds new gray matter. That's how you, all learning is building new neural tracks in gray matter. doesn't take too much time. You don't have to finish any of the drawings that you start. And then you wake your, make your way back. Once you're back home, you sit down and you just reflect on the day. And um, you, you write down just uh, a few comments and thoughts about it. It was a good day. Um, time with friends. Birds. and cheese. So you let yourself kind of onto that page. Um, you're going to remember that day in a really different way than if you had just kind of headed out for a walk. It would have become just one of those days. But because you did this, um, your 
your memory of that day is going to be so much stronger, so much richer. And that's what, um, that's what you're building. This is about your life and your memories, how to make them better, make them richer. And if you live in a place as spectacular and rich and nuanced as West Marin, um, you owe it to yourself to, to, to take a long, find a way to soak that up just a little bit more. You find that through a process like this, your ability to see and remember will grow and grow and grow. And that's how we build a real knowledge of place. This is the essential tool for any naturalist, but not just a naturalist or a scientist, an essential tool for anyone who wants to just pay attention to the fabric of their life. This is a tool for mindfulness and being awake and being alive. And I want to invite all of you join me um, in exploring the world around you using this, this tool. Um, it gets, it gets better with practice. And again, it's something that we all can do. Drawing and sketching, things like that, it is not a gift. It is a, um, it's a skill that you develop just by putting in some reps and practice. And if you haven't drawn since fourth grade, when you first pick up your pencil, it'll be scary. It will be scary. Um, but what you need to do is work through that. And don't think of this journal as a place for recording a bunch of pretty pictures, but use it as a place for documenting your memories and your experiences. And what that does, and, but, but you're gonna use the pictures as a tool to help you document those experiences. And that just gives you permission to make a lot of pictures. And if you do that, then what happens is, after making a lot of pictures, you get good at making pictures because you're doing it on a regular basis. Um, so the competency will come. But if you focus on the pretty picture at the start, like people, they say, why do you draw? I draw to make a pretty picture. No, 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 no. Forget about that. That will come, but that's a sidecar that is pulled by the horse of paying attention to the fabric of your life and enriching the nuance and details of the memories that you have. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I want to invite you folks to join me on some of my uh, free weekly workshops. Um, got one coming up on Tuesday, next Tuesday, on how to draw hawks in flight. It's going to be cool. And you could be there, West Marin. You got hawks and they fly. So, um, and, um, and, and, and here's, here's the uh, money back guarantee. Um, the, if you throw yourself into this for one year and start journaling dangerously, um, and at the end of that year, you kind of look back and say like, Jack was wrong, right? <laughs> I'm not getting better. This, this, I, I don't see this as a learnable skill. I'm, you know, no, it's just not happening. Um, you call me up and you will become my pet project and we'll get free, um, free classes and tutorials, um, personal ones, until we can figure out what's going on. I will be absolutely fascinated you at, with you as a neurological anomaly. And I'm going to want to find out what's going on. Um, but just so to know that this, this is absolutely something that you can do. If you thought that that was that like, you know, that would be kind of fun to have. And what would it be like then to kind of look back through the journals from years ago, right? And you're, it's not too late to start where you are right now. If you have, if you just have, have time to make a few journals and you pass those on to your grandkids, those are going to be something that they value so much more than the silver because it's you on the page and your reflections of, of what, is, what is significant to you. It's gonna be of value to them and it's gonna be of value to you. As you look back through your experiences, all those little details come back. If you don't write it down, if you don't put it in the journal, it's going to disappear. It's gonna disappear from your memory. Not because you've got a bad memory, it's because we all do. 
That's the way we evolved. It's what we're stuck with. But there's a hack, a way of getting around that, and that's keeping a journal. And um, so uh, there are a couple of questions. Uh, somebody asked about how often um, I keep a journal. And um, I try to journal maybe a few times a week. Um, when I am in a place where I have no responsibilities, I journal every day. Um, but I'm finding that when I am in dad land, um, I, I try to like, like I, if I don't journal a couple of times a week, I go nuts, right? So um, I try to sort of build it into my daddying and, um, uh, and build kind of like, I, I need to, in order to teach a workshop, I'd better go do some journaling so I can, so I kind of call it my work. Um, but yeah, a, a few times a week, if you can get yourself into the routine of doing it daily, then the growth curve just goes boom and it comes really, really fast. Um, but, uh, but, the, but it, yeah, it really helps to be consistent. Um, so when I am out um, rambling, I will spend um, probably, you know, because these, these drawings and things, they don't take, you don't, they don't have to take a long time. Um, I will, um, I don't drive my traveling companions nuts, um, but, and probably a, what proportion of my time on a day of, of rambling around in the field. Again, if I'm on my own, I'll just like walk a few paces and sit down and sketch and then walk a few paces and sit down and sketch because I just totally pulls me into my happy place. And, um, I, my brain sloshes with dopamine and I'm just blissed out and in a flow state. Um, but when I'm with a group of people and they're, we're, we're having a hike, um, I, I find that, you know, in the, the sort of the times and breaks in between, um, I, I can easily squeeze this sort of stuff in. And also I'm a fast hiker. So if, I'm re if I find like there's a slug, I gotta check out this slug. I'll say, hey everybody, I'm gonna check out this slug for the next half hour and I'll catch up with you later. And I will, um, because I'm a fast hiker. Um, the uh, a person was, was uh, asking about what sort of the tools and the brushes that I use. I'll show you two brushes here. Boom. So what's cool about these brushes is these brushes have, look at this, the water inside the handle. So that makes doing watercolor in the field really, really easy. Um, and so both of, these, both of these have that. So the flat one, there's water inside the handle. Um, and um, when it uh, runs out, I just open it up, stick it under the tap, pour more water in, and, and I'm um, off to work. So my field setup, I take an old sock, one of those dryer orphans, and put it around one wrist. And then I've got a little palette. I'll then hold on to my journal. And um, th this brush is really, really easy to, to, to use. So um, I will, I just rub it into the paint that I want. It is now wetted that paint. I then come along here. I paint my fence post more. I now want to um, to change the color, so I give it a a squeeze and I wipe it on my sock. My brush is now clean, and I'm going to make that blue just a little bit more vivid on my bluebird's back. Test the colors before it touches down. There it goes. Now it's just, it's a clean blue. Now I give it a squeeze and a wipe. I wipe some of it out, keeping a little bit of it in. And I can then take that stuff and move it around. There we go. Oh, that's a more vivid blue on my bluebird. Um, and so, and then when I want to 
um, totally clean it out. I just give it a little bit more of a squeeze, a few more wipes on there. This brush is now clean. I give it a spin so it's in a point. I take its own little cap, put that on it. It clicks on securely and throw that in my backpack and bump, 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 bump down the trail. So you can make the logistics of wrangling your stuff in the field um, a lot easier. So a little bit of part of what we look at with uh, nature journaling is how do you how do you kind of manage your equipment so that you don't have too much stuff and you can easily get to the things that you want to use your high percentage stuff that you use all the time and um, that is um, yes Josh, I have a oh Amy go ahead oh Amy you're 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 muted. Someone's asking how they join your Tuesday workshop. Oh, so it's, it's easy. If you go to my website, and I've got a website, which is, I'm, my, my, my mom and dad named me John Muir Laws. So some people think you must have changed that name just to sell books about the Sierra Nevada. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they named me and I'm sticking with it. Um, and uh, so I, um, I have a website, which is johnmuirlaws.com. And there's a schedule on there. You go to the schedule, you'll see, you know, here are all the upcoming classes. You can click on the class. And for, for the, the hawk drawing one, you actually have to register for it. It's through, uh, it's, I'm doing it in association with the National Audubon Society. And so there'll be a thing to click on that to, to say, I wanna join this class. Audubon then sends you the Zoom link. For most of mine, you just go to my website, you click on the activity, the Zoom link pops up in front of you, you click on that, it brings you into the Zoom meeting. And um, then you are, then there we are. <laughs> and um, then, so every Tuesday is, is a, I've got a class that's either a kind of an informal thing where people will where people will come up and they'll say, I'm having trouble drawing this and this. And so we then workshop those sorts of things. This coming Tuesday though, it's a formal class on drawing Hawks in flight. My Thursdays are always a formal, formal class on drawing some different subject. And Wednesdays are a class for teachers and homeschool parents and um, outdoor educators who want to teach nature journaling where we get together and brainstorm lots of ideas. Um, and those are often really lively, really interesting discussions that a lot of non-teachers have now started joining also because we get into some really cool topics and, and it's, it's, it's fun. So there's good fellowship there. Um, so all you have to do, there's no registration for most of the classes that I teach, like the Audubon thing is an exception, for, but most of them, no registration, no pre-registration required. You just show up, you click the button and boom, you're in a Zoom meeting and it's fun. Oh, Jack. and if you've missed a bunch of the other ones, I've filmed those workshops and they're on my blog, which is also on johnmuirlaws.com as free. So there's no paywall. It's all free and you can, um, you can go in there and get um, whatever, uh, you know, classes you've missed. So if you want to see like, I want to see the one on how to draw the bluebird, all right? How do you block that in? What are your first lines? That that video is there. So you can check those out. So Kirby, yeah. I, Jack, I've got two quick questions given that we're at the top of the hour. This has been absolutely awesome. Um, number one, for those of us who are new to journaling, if we've drawn something, but we don't know what that plant is, do you recommend that we come back and determine what that plant or flower is and then go back to our journal and put a little arrow and say, that's a such and such, that is a after journaling identification. So we now know that what we saw and sketched. Yeah. I, I do that all the time. So okay. basically think of the journal as this is your brain on paper. If having drawn that picture of that flower, hey, but does anybody know that flower? Anybody know that flower? Mm -mm. Yeah, all right, you gotta look for it next spring. <laughs> okay, um, and um, so the um, if you um, are motivated to follow up your questions, 
then absolutely do. And I encourage people to write those into the journal. There's, it doesn't have to be like, I did this all in the field. You know, like some people do some stuff in the field and add to it when they get back home. Um, you know, all, all of those things can um, all um, flow together. If you come up with a question or you've drawn something and you don't feel inspired to, um, to, to, to write about it, uh, or to, to follow it up and find out what it is, that's totally fine too. Let the mystery be. And, you know, if you, um, you know, want to call it my purple friend, you know, call it my purple friend. And that's, that's, that's great. Um, you will find though, it's a slippery slope. Once you start, you know, you kind of get to identify a couple of wildflowers, it's fun and you're gonna wanna do more. And um, you got a sketch of something, you're gonna be like, oh, I gotta know this one. I made a sketch of it. And so it just pulls you to become a better local naturalist um, because you spend a little bit more time with that flower. And then once you kind of associate a name with it, you'd be like, oh yeah. All right, well, I've got something similar. Um, oh, so Alan, Alan, Alan Kepner is our local botanist. That's right, very good, sir. Um, that's right, blue-eyed grass is the name of that wildflower. Boom. Fantastic. Go hiking with Alan and bring cheese um, and, and, and feed Alan treats and Alan will teach you some local wildflowers. It's great. You know, it's uh, the first few are free and then you're hooked. It's so much fun. Then you, you, then you see them in the year after that. It's like seeing an old friend again. It's like, look, there you are. I haven't seen you in months. It's great. It's fine. All right. Well, I've got I've got one one last question. I think just to be respectful of everyone's time today, you gave us an example of a bird and a flower and the cheese and and so forth. Do you ever go out, or do you recommend going out with sort of focused journalism? Today, wildflowers. Tomorrow, you know, something else. Uh, or do you just mm -hmm. journal what you what catches you every time? So uh, what what. Um, the answer is yes and, right? Um, so sometimes I go out with a really specific focus. I want to get down to wave crest and I want to watch the owl fly out and I want to document it, right? And I'm there with like, I got a mission. Um, there's something that I'm, I'm curious about and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that. I want to go out to the point. Right now, it is, it's bird migration season, right? Fall has come. We've had our equinox and the birds are like, we better get our flight on. And so the little songbirds are all heading down the coast and they get tired and they get blown out to sea and they're like, ah, this, this is really rough. And then they look, they go, a light, a light, fly to the light. And they fly to the light and they go, it's a lighthouse. There's no place for me to land here. And they go like, oh, look, there's a little cypress tree right next to it. And then they hop into that. So like if you go to, like sometimes I'll go to the, the Point Reyes lighthouse and just go to that little grove of trees that you get to right before you get to the visitor's, visitor's center. And it's like shoulder to shoulder lost birds. And uh, like, so, so sometimes I'm, I'm out there with a mission. Another thing you can do is sometimes just give yourself a project. Like today, I'm gonna look for things that are blue. And I'm gonna like, I'm gonna look for blue birds, I'm gonna look for blue beetles, I'm gonna look for flowers with blue in them. Ooh, I got a bunch, All right? And um, I'm going to, or um, things that are nibbled on, right? If you give yourself some little subcategory, what it does is it gets your, it gets a different search image into your brain than you normally hike around with. If you are looking for signs of fall as you hike, and that's the theme for your journal that day, you're going to find them and you will see things that you otherwise would not have seen. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so um, sometimes I just, I'm a, I'm a blank slate and like, let's just go out there and let's see what happens and whatever happens, I'm just going to, I'm going to roll with that. But, but other times you give yourself a little project. And sometimes when you have a project, it just makes you see things in a way that's different. And both of those are good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amy, um, Amy, are you unmuted? Let's see. Yeah, you are. I'm Amy, unmuted. I Thank you, John, so much. Thank you very, very much. With um, really a round, hearty round of applause. And thank you all who attended tonight.
Yeah, and again, I just want to send a shout out to our first responders, our firefighters, and our safety personnel, people who are keeping all of us um, uh, safe and cozy. Um, I've donated the um, honorarium for tonight's fee to the uh, volunteer fire department and uh, want to encourage anybody who's able to at this time to see what you can do to also support our, our, our volunteer services. That can be with our money, it can be with our time, um, or uh, just by giving them a, a wave as they, as they drive by. Um, stay safe, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Um, the more that we, in these times that are scary, um, this, is, this is what tests us. In these times, are we looking for opportunities to help people in our community? That's, you know, let that define who we are. Um, and, you know, it's, it's easy to be, um, to be out there when, uh, and I'm not suggesting that people get into situations where you are unnecessarily exposing yourself to the COVID virus. But let's see what we can do to um, help our neighbors to be a community, to stand together and um, uh, to, to help each other through this. If you have a neighbor who's an elder, um, can you, and you're going down to the grocery store, can you bring their, get, get their grocery list? The first time that you ask for it, they will say no. So you have to actually ask three times. But if you do, they may let you get their groceries for them and it will be a hassle for you. And that will be a beautiful thing because you did it anyway. Um, and so let's just look for ways in this time of division and in this time when we are frightened to be generous and to be kind to each other. Um, and look for opportunities to go out into nature, to explore in beautiful West Marin, to document it, and to make more of those experiences and memories, perhaps through nature journal. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jack.